Hello everyone! Today we are going to do a small design challenge. So we try to get this navigation bar here into our Flutter application. And like you can see, the borders here are rounded on each side. And also we have here these images which are colored and also an indicator on the top. And that's what we try to accomplish today. We start off with an application where we have this tab bar here and we can go here between three different pages or tabs and uh, we will later if we click on one of these tabs it will change to this tab for example if we go to the second tab then it should go to this place and if we go to the third tab it should go to this place we start by going to our main file here where we have our application and also the page view builder which is responsible for showing this content here and we have another property under our body which we can call with bottom navigation bar and here we simply can provide a widget and then it will be displayed here on the bottom of our application we want first of all to create here a new widget so we go here with rounded navigation bar and we will have two parameters here first of all we have some tabs which we can supply from outside so we will put these tabs here inside where we have these three buttons. So if we go back to our image, we want to display these three tabs here first of all. And therefore we have here the list of three tabs and with the same icon every time. And this list of tabs will be passed to this new widget which we create. And we also want to create a controller. And here we want to create a tab controller. We also have to name it then here tab controller. And with this tab controller, we have access to these management of our tabs when it is clicked on this tab or if the tab changed or whatever is happening, we get a control over it with this tab controller. So the next thing what we need to do, we need to go to our init state method and here we create our tab controller and we simply create a new object of the tab controller we have to supply it with the length, how many tabs we have, which this tab controller should manage. And we have tabs.length, so we go with this list here. And we also need to provide a sticker provider here, which is responsible for our animations. And therefore we need to go to the top here to our state class. And here we have this uh, keyword with, and after it we place the ticker provider state mixin so that we allow for this state to be animatable or that um, the ticker which is a kind of timer for animations is provided for the state and this will then be passed here to this vsync function so this is um, the equivalence of this ticker provider state mixin another thing is that we need to create this widget so we go here to widget and create it quickly we will import it here also and then we need to create these two properties. So we pass it here to our widget. The next thing what we need to do is to go to the build method and here we want to create a navigation bar. And in Flutter we have two options to create a navigation bar. There's one which is called tab bar, which we can use. And the other one is the bottom navigation bar. In this case we want to use the tab bar, therefore we write here tab bar. And here we can pass the controller which we got from our outside world and of course also the tabs which we just say here again tabs. Another thing we want to do is to create here the colors. So we go here and convert it to a block body and then get the selected color and the unselected color. So if we currently display the tab bar we don't see so much but um, we will change it quickly. So we will also add here two parameters and add this here to our constructor. And what it does here is that it gets the indicator color of our scene as the selected color. And also we take here a kind of gray color for our unselected color. And then we need to pass it to our tab bar. So that's what we are going to do. We write here label color with selected color and also unselected label color with unselected color. And if we hot restart our application, it looks like this. So we have here our indicator color, which is a kind of blue. And also we have this indicator at the bottom, 
So what we need to do here is to change these colors. So I have set it here the selected color to indicator color of our seam. So it gets the indicator color of our seam. So we need to go to our seam data here and add another property which is called indicator color. And here we go with colors.red which is also shown here in our image. And then we have here this indicator color red. So every time we select a different tab we have this red color. The next thing we want to do is to create this white background here and also to create these borders here. Therefore we create another method which is called top border and this gets first of all the widget child and also a border radius. The next thing what we do is to return a new widget here. So we return a container and pass in the child which we get from our method here as the property and here we have the choice to create a decoration and we go here with the box decoration then we want to set the color of colors white and the border radius to radius and also box shadow of box shadow and we go here with the color of colors.gray 400 and we wrap our widget here around with this top border and we also need to pass here this radius which we create here at the top so we create here a new border radius which is vertical and we only want to have a radius at the top and therefore we just say here top we pass this here inside our top border widget and then restart our application. And now if we compare our image here with our app, we see we have here this rounded border and also background color of white. The next thing what we need to do, we need to shift our indicator here to the top and we can achieve this by adding here another property. So we have here an indicator property and here we can set the underline tab indicator and here we also set the border side and here in our border side we have a property which is called width to make this border a little bit stronger so let's restart our application first of all so here it looks stronger and like you can see the color is also changed so we need also to supply here a color the selected color and if we hot restart we should see again the color red and the next thing what we need to do is to shift this underline indicator to the top position therefore we have here another property which is called incest and here we go with incest only and bottom and now we can change here the position so if we hot reload it you see the position changed from the bottom we have three pixels distance and the normal value for this tab bar is 4040 so if we change it then it is shown here at the top position another thing we need to do is to make this indicator smaller that it fits to our icon size here and therefore we have another property here which is called indicator size and here we simply say tab bar indicator size the label and if we hot reload then it has this smaller indicator and now if we tap here around it's every time changed and it looks pretty good I think. And if we also notice here we have a little bit shadow at the top. So that's what we need to add here because right now we don't have a shadow. And therefore we go here again to our top border and wrap it with another widget. And we also create here a container and copy the decoration, delete here the color and this time we also need to add to our box shadow a blur radius and we go here with 4.0 and if we hot reload it then you see the shadow here which is quite similar to our application here so the next thing what we need to do is to change our tabs here if we click on another tab we can go here away from our rounded navigation bar widget and handle everything in our main file because here we have our tab controller and also the page controller which is responsible for these widgets here to display. I created here another method in our helper method. So we simply can combine two controllers 
so that they align to the same thing. So let's import it here and add both controllers to this combined controller method. So we add the tab controller and also the page controller. Here inside we have many things which are going on. So we simply add to our controller and to our page controller a listener for each of them. So first of all we go to the control listener which is responsible if here is something changed. Then we want to say that the page controller should animate to the index of our controller which is selected. So it means if we tap here on this icon our controller index is here 1 because this is 0, this is 1. Then our page controller should also go to the page 1 which is this blue widget here and if we tap on 2 for example, the index 2, then it should go to the page of the second widget which is in our list and then it goes to the green widget and here we can control how long this animation should take to the next widget. So I set here 400 milliseconds and also we can say how this animation should work and I set here decelerate so it's getting a little bit quicker and then it decelerates at the end of the animation. So let's restart it quickly and test this bottom navigation bar. So if we tap here on a different tab it will automatically go to this next page. And I also added here this listener for the page controller. So if we change here the position like it is shown here then this indicator is also animated to the right position. So what is happening here inside, we get here this offset which only indicates where we currently are. So we can print it quickly. So if we go to this right direction, it will have positive values. And if we go to the left direction, it will have negative values from 0 to 1. So here we have until minus 1. And if we go to the right direction, we have until 1. What it is happening here is that we every time set the controller offset. So we set the offset of this controller here at the bottom with this new offset which we got from our page controller. Therefore this offset here, this indicator at the bottom is every time updated which is pretty cool. Another thing we do is if we get pretty close like to 99 or minus 99 then we want to animate to this new controller index. So for example if we are in the middle and we go here to the left then this controller index minus one says we should stay at the red one because the controller index itself is every time the current index which was the blue one here and the same for the right direction if we go over a value of 0 0.99 then we want to animate to the next tab controller index and this next thing what we want to do is to fix a small bug so if we go here you see on the right side that there is a little bit splash color of the inkwell which is underlined by this navigation tab and also to the left side there's this splash color. So what we can do is to hide it. So we go here, it's a quick and dirty thing. So maybe not the right solution if you really want to show maybe an inkwell somehow. For this solution and for this design we don't want to show an inkwell Let's hot restart it and now if we go here and tap longer we don't see this inkwell anymore. What is happening here? We just set our theme, a theme data where we just disable all these highlight color and also the splash color of this inkwell which is creating this bug here to the right side. Therefore we set these both colors to transparent and then it won't show the splash color or this highlight color here on the left side or on the right side. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!